Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to more Timberborn in our town of Riversteel, looking at some of the updates 2.0 in celebration of the first anniversary for the game. Of course, this video is still sponsored by Mechanistry. Big thank you to them for that. If you guys like what you see and you'd like to learn more, there is always going to be a link in the description down below. In the last video, we basically set up an early game economy, and for the most part, we're looking pretty good. Plenty of food generation. We're mostly doing okay in water as well. This might be a a little bit concerning as our population continues to grow, but we'll find new ways to account for that. The biggest issue, of course, is still going to come down to logs. Whenever our maple trees do grow up, we tend to get a massive influx of lumber, but outside of that, we're still kind of stuck in waiting. I might need to expand out a little bit over here, let's say, build up another forester and start taking advantage of more of this hydrated land. As long as the dam is around to keep it this way, then during a drought, we can continue growing lots and lots more trees, and I probably will be doing that. We've also started to work with some power. We're getting some of these compact water wheels up and running, producing plenty of planks and gears. The next thing we're going to need to work on is getting metal, right? We're going to have to take a look at some of these metal ruins and start looking for scrap. That's necessary because in this particular video, I'd like to move on to discovering the golems. Golems being the brand new robotic uh, beavers that we can use to accomplish a lot of our jobs. But it does take a whole bunch of resources. And just as importantly, it's going to take me a heck of a lot of science points. I have nowhere near enough points to unlock everything I'm going to need. But you know what? One step at a time. Let's go ahead and start working toward extracting some metals with things like the scavenger flag. And then we'll be able to start smelting this down into something usable. Let's not forget to continue placing down more of these breeding pods as we go. The larger our population gets, the more of these we are going to need simply to continue replacing our population as they grow old and die off. Aha, now up over here we have placed down our scavenger flag, which means we have a beaver running around just knocking down some of these ruins to get some scrap metal. In order to really take advantage of this though, we need a smelter. And for the smelter, we're going to need probably a lot of power. So I would like to go ahead and unlock this probably right about now. I don't see any reason not to. What I want to do is probably place a few of these off in this general area, turning this into one big industrial zone fueled by some of these compact water wheels. And if we have extra power available, then at some point what I'd like to do is also unlock the gravity battery using some of that steel that I will be producing in order to store extra power. So that when we inevitably have a drought, which by the way, there's one on the way in 1.3 days, even when the water stops flowing, we still have technically a battery of power. So when this thing is running, how much power are we realistically getting? About 425-ish. Okay. Well, that is enough to fuel at least two of these smelters if that's something we want. So do I want to have two smelters right now? I think that the answer to that is probably no. I think one is going to be sufficient for what I need at the moment, but we want the option to move into two later. So let's try building something kind of like this, and we'll leave ourselves some space to rearrange if we need to. And there we go. We now have a smelter. All right, so what does this require? It requires a couple of logs as some fuel plus some scrap metal, and that turns into one metal block. All right, so it's kind of expensive to get any metal, but that's fine. Most of the stuff that I want to build doesn't cost a ton of metal anyway. One thing that might be nice, by the way, would be to get an engine up and running so we don't have to rely on the water wheels too much. This does burn a lot of logs, but uh, I don't know. I mean, it'd be nice to have consistent power. Oh, another beaver got injured. As a quick reminder, that is one of the new negative statuses, but we do have a little medical bed set up already, so he's just taking a little nap and resty. Uh, should be back up on his feet, slapping his tail, chewing on some logs, no time flat. In the meantime, over here, I am starting to work on building up one of these new gravity batteries. I want to test this out and see how effective it is. I feel like the more space you have for this block to fall down, the more energy you ultimately can get out of this. What we may want to consider doing at some point is using some dynamite to actually blow up a couple of these blocks to give ourselves some more verticality. But I'll come back to that. We'll see. Let's just start with something small and see how it works. Okay, and there we go. We now have ourselves a little gravity battery. Whoa, okay. So, hold on. Simply by building this, we've created, effectively, 8,000 horsepower. 
But when this thing needs to be activated, it's going to start slowly dropping, and that's what's going to relieve some of the energy. However, once it is down, if the water flow does begin again, we're going to be able to start winching it back up. So let's wait until the next drought comes around, which is probably going to be announced any cycle now, and we'll get to see this thing in action and actually make sure it works the way that I'm envisioning. And here comes the drought. Okay. Uh, wow. Seven days? Yeah, this is actually going to be a much more unpleasant one. So let's take a look. Sure enough. Yeah, okay. So slowly but surely, we can see... Whoop, there we go. Hang on. You can see that the load is gradually reducing. That's potential energy being converted into kinetic energy right there, ladies and gentlemen. Now, it's not enough to survive for seven cycles. No doubt about it. But it is enough to survive for a good long while. Um, interesting. Yeah, if you have a very steep clip face, and you're willing to place down a whole bunch of these along over here, you could store up an absolute ton of power. Very, very interesting. I like that change. That's clever. And yeah, sure enough, once this weight does reach some sort of bottomed out, you know, surface, in this case, this little bit of a cliff face over here, that's it. That's all it's got. I am positive that if I were to just simply delete some of this, this little weight could just keep going. So instead of 8,000, this might be worth, let's say, 12,000 or something along those lines. Dude, these are cool. I like it. Hey, let's go ahead and start planning on building out some larger dams, plus some triple floodgates off in this direction. Reason I want that is if we're now getting to the stage of the game where I can have seven day droughts or longer, um, even the water I've got stored here probably ain't gonna cut it long term. We're gonna need to store a heck of a lot more water. Unfortunately, in order to make this work, I also need to dam this area off too. Otherwise, the water is just going to flow down over here and bypass everything I want. Oh, yeah. All right. So say goodbye to a bunch of water over here. So we're probably going to lose our spatter dock and cattails. It's not really a big deal. It's more just kind of unfortunate. Yeah. All right. So that kind of proves it right there. Um, we definitely do not have enough water to sustain this as of yet. This dam needs to get built up. And this dam needs to get built up. There's a lot of dams going on right now. Lots of damming involved. And in case you weren't following how this works, there's the gravity battery filling itself back up. Converting that kinetic energy right back into potential energy. Whoa, 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 whoa! Okay, here's an example of unintended consequences right there. Holy crud, okay. So we finish out some of the dam over here. Well, now we're flooding even more in other directions. This is, oh, this is great. Um, so I apparently uh, choked up the water flow a little bit too much going this direction. You can see that it started flooding all of this area. We needed a, uh, a little bit more of a gradual transition. The water level's already quite high right here. Raise it too much, and uh, exactly what you just saw can happen. Now we've flooded this area, and I'm pretty sure we've technically killed all the dandelions. It's a good thing I wasn't relying on any dandelions. What this means is I've actually been a little bit overly ambitious with this particular dam here. I only can get about a half the value that I currently built for. Kind of a waste of materials. Probably should not be literally building any more of this, actually. Hmm, <laughs> okay. Um, only way that that changes is if I go further upstream and increase the levees so that we don't have a flooding situation over here. Which, uh, you can imagine would be a fairly expensive investment. I'd have to pretty much do e undo everything along the edge of the river over here. So yeah, that's, that's no longer really worth continuing to build out. It's much better to go further upstream where the water's not gonna horribly flood my base. That said, it still works fantastically for the situations when I have a drought. There we go. And we don't want any of the water to continue leaking down this way. For now, we can just keep this entire area locked. Am I making use of the water right now? No. But if I need to, I can always reduce this a little bit, and you can see it starts making the water move. So basically, further downstream, we have a whole extra reservoir that I can pull from in an emergency situation. Not so much up over here. That's exactly why I need to be building this area out. Here we go, much better. Okay, so now we can definitely reserve some of the water up over in this direction. So if we have another drought, I can continue flowing down into this general area. So at this point, we've kind of dammed up almost everything I care about in the river all the way up to the inlet. Obviously, we can make it bigger and taller over time, but uh, at least for now, seems to be doing pretty darn good. 
But at some point, building bigger and taller dams can be a little bit of a challenge, uh, especially when you start finding, you know, hey, look, this looks like we could raise it up another level until you realize, oh, right, the water will just flow through this forest and kill everything downstream. Yeah, so unless you're willing to dam this whole area up, that's probably not going to work out. And even if you did, what happens? It floods out this entire area. Hope you weren't planning on making use of that underground mine anytime soon. So yeah, I think we've more or less capped this stuff out, but that's good. It means I feel very comfortable about our current situation. We can consistently get plenty of water, continue growing plenty of trees, get plenty of food. Everything is solid. So, with that all being known, now might be the time to take a look at some new stuff. Under the science, we're going to be taking a look at the Golem Part Factory. Takes several different components to make several other different components, plus 150 horsepower. Uh, it's a pretty large structure, apparently. Okay, so um, right over here then, seems kind of fun. Let's build that sucker up. And then we have the Golem Assembler, which takes another 250 power. That's, that's a lot of power. Um, far more than my water wheels are currently able to sustain. Hold on, is there a better place that we could do this? where we can still generate plenty of power. If I were willing to get rid of some farms, maybe. So instead, maybe this is a good opportunity to pull out the engine. 400 science points, a good buy, but we have this big sucker to burn some of the lumber and just start generating a heck of a lot more power. Yeah, I think this is gonna end up being the way to go for a lot of things going forward. As long as we keep growing lots of timber with forestry, we can handle it, no problem. So, let's go back to our science and let's build that part factory. And maybe I can actually stack a couple things on top of this if we wanna be crazy. Hang on, can we fit the golem assembler on top? Oh yeah, we totally can. Ooh, that sounds like fun. There we go, we can do something kind of like this. Staircase leading up into the assembler, directly beneath it is going to be the parts factory, and then we have a large generator through this engine, which is gonna keep everything up and running. How much power is this generate again? Uh, about 400 horsepower. Yeah, that should be about exactly how much we need in order to keep this sucker up and running. Perfect, perfect, that's very convenient. All right, so in the Golem Part Factory, what do we want? Well, we have three different recipes to choose from. I guess we'll start by building out a chassis or two. Technically, we could probably have factories for each of the independ uh, independent parts, and that could also be a good way to go, but uh, the cheaper solution, at least for now, is to just build out one part at a time, and once we get all the components we're gonna need, we can try assembling it. Once we actually get the assembler built up, we can see what that recipe is gonna look like, and we'll have a much better idea of what we're actually working with. It does take a long time to build each individual component. 18 hours, that's a fair bit. Um, you know, even without the engine, it looks like we're still making enough power to do, oh, never mind. Now that we have the assembler, it turns out we're using up all of that power. Okay, so everything's down to a much lower efficiency. Yeah, we really need to get this engine up and running. Uh, for that, we need a lot more gears, which I do not quite have enough, but we're very close, and then plenty of metal blocks. That should be fine. Actually, no, that's pretty close too. All right, what does it take for the Golem Assembler? Looks like we need the chassis, four arms, and a head. And by arms, I meant limbs, of course. Okay, sure, why? Okay, it looks like I can store two of each. So we can build two chassis, two heads, and eight limbs before we're at our capacity for the Golem Assembler. Got it. Seems to me like we don't need anyone working over here until we have finished building up some of these parts. But once we have that, yeah, we should transition to something else. Oh, looks like our engine is built. Ooh, that looks kind of fun. Whee! Okay, so how does this thing work exactly? It can store up to 10 logs and produces 400 horsepower, but needs someone to work it actively. That's honestly completely fine though, because um, all the buildings that draw power are also only drawing power during the normal work shifts. So you only need the engine on when everyone else is already working anyway. This doesn't have to be a passive thing throughout the night, kind of like the compact water wheel would be. Technically, if you want to be crazy, something you could do is actually start building a whole bunch of these batteries. It starts draining during the day and then refilling during the night thanks to the water wheels. Ooh, that actually gives you a lot more buffer to work with power than you used to be able to. I like that. That's cool. Oof, got ourselves a real long drought this time. 7.3 days. Good news is I'm pretty sure we're still going to be able to handle it. The one thing I can't seem to handle right now, actually, is um, 
simply constructing enough of these robotic parts. We need so many gears and planks. I I'm using up pretty much everything that I've got right now. Simply ain't gonna cut it, apparently. So, I'm swapping out one of my plank workshops over here for the, um, for the gears. But I also know that I'm going to need to get myself at least some more of these plank workshops, preferably attached to the same system as the engine. Because once the engine is up and running, uh, it's enough to keep everything alive for now. But with these also going, we end up having like 300 horsepower of surplus. So if I can find a good way to get these things connected to the same power network, it's probably a good idea to get a few more of these lumber mills up and running. Well, there's kind of absolutely nothing I can do right now while we wait for the drought to finish out since this is a long one. So I went ahead and built a beaver temple down over here. Yeah, there we go. Beavers love spirituality. As long as they're worshiping some sort of great, what is this, iron tree? I have no idea, but it fulfills their spirituality needs, which means we're getting a little bit more well-being. Injury here is a little bit annoying. Not enough people taking showers either. You all stank! Yeah, there we go. See, I'm just getting a whole bunch of well-being levels all of a sudden. Went to 16, then 17, now all of a sudden 18. The temple's good, man. What can I say? What's it doing for me overall, by the way? Wow, being up to level 19 gets me 40% extra work speed, 15% movement, and 40% life expectancy. Dang, dude. Yeah, yeah, getting your well-being up pretty high is uh, really impactful. That's great. Oh, finally, that nonsense is over. Yeah, the longer the game goes on, the uh, the harder and harder this is going to get. Oh, man, at some point we're going to have no choice but to actually try to damn this whole area off. Oh, boy, that's going to be quite the project. Massive project. But you know what? That's why we build robots. Okay, it's taken a very long time to get to this point, but I think we now officially have all the materials I need to make myself a couple of different robots. So let's assign a couple of people to this golem assembler. And with these components, let's see, I've got five torsos by accident. Oops, okay. A couple of heads and a whole bunch of limbs. We should be able to make two of these things. What else do they require? Great question. Um, let's see, we have charging stations, a place where the golems can recharge. They need this to function. I guess it's gonna take some power. That's fine. What if we just set up a few over here connected into the same power network that we've had up to this point? Uh, right now, let's see, we're producing 350. I'm not sure exactly what our power demand is going to be when we're done with all of this. Let's see, right now we are consuming how much power overall? We have an extra 150 horsepower to spare. And every one of these charging stations apparently takes 50 horsepower. So this actually should come out to be almost the perfect amount of uh, power. Uh, once we at least have some of these robots done anyway. Let's just wait for this to be finished. 36 hours? Oh boy, that's a long project. Wait, I think it may have actually finished and I missed it. Where did it go? Can I click on this and find him? Whoa, hello. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We got a golem somewhere. Where are you? There it is. Coghead number one. Okay. Where'd you go? You're hanging out somewhere. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There you are. I think I, I, I think he's underneath my statue. Hold up. Up, ah, up. Ah, found him. Hey, Coghead one. Okay. So you apparently have 45% work speed and 30% movement speed, which is pretty nice. Um, What the heck am I supposed to do with you, though? That's a great question. We can select golems and say we want to have some assigned to this building. So now, let's slow uh, time down a little bit so we can see him actually moving. It looks like Coghead is going to be one of my haulers. Okay, what's with the tail, by the way? Is the tail actually necessary for a robot? Probably not, but it sure looks cool. Dude, we're building our own robots. Well, right now it looks like our robot is doing nothing but transporting goods around. I think in the next video, what we're gonna do is try to find a way to put them to work. There are some things we can do to boost them. A control tower being one of these things. You can place these down and it's gonna boost up their performance even further. So if you know where you're gonna have them working, this could be pretty useful for you. For example, in this industrial area, you place it down over here, boom, wherever you place the robot, he's working extra fast. But there are other things we can do. Don't forget, terraforming is an option, but it requires golems to pull it off. 
So I think that's gonna have to be our goal for the next video. We are going to, one, build out a huge army of golems, as many of these guys as I can reasonably afford with my current power grid. Then we're gonna supercharge these suckers to create a super powerful industrial base that hopefully never needs to really sleep except for charging once in a while. And then we're gonna experiment with some terraforming and find out just how viable it really is. It would be kind of cool to find out that terraforming is more cost effective than building out all these wooden dams. Maybe I can seal this area off in a cost effective way. Heck, maybe we can even send a whole load of golems over to a new district and that way I don't have to send a bunch of supplies over here and we can just let them run and keep this place up and running and build out the dam that way. There's a lot of options basically with golems. I'm excited to find out what their limitations are really going to be. Thank you all very much for watching this video. I do hope that you enjoyed and again, Thank you to Mechanistry for sponsoring this video, and if you guys would like to learn more about the update now that it has been released, you can find a link in the description down below. My name is Provis, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.